When an incident like this occurs, a lawsuit is not a mere probability. It is an inevitability. Viva Fry, Montreal litigator turned YouTuber, and this is Winnie the Westie getting ready for his afternoon nap. And in the non-Kyle Rittenhouse news of the day, there is a lawsuit that is being filed against Travis Scott and everyone involved in that recent incident. Now, for those of you who may not have heard, there was a tragic incident at Travis Scott's recent Astroworld concert that left eight people dead, a stampede. Call it what you will. You knew there was going to be a civil action. There might be criminal charges, but this is the essence of what happened. Deaths at Travis Scott's Astroworld concert spurs calls for independent review. The Houston police and fire departments were deeply involved in safety measures for the music festival where a surging crowd killed eight people, playing key roles in crowd control measures, on-site security staffing, and the emergency response. The police chief even says he met with the headlining performer before the show. Now the city's police department is leading the criminal investigation into how the deadly chaos erupted during Friday night's performance by rapper Travis Scott. While a prominent local official is calling for a separate independent review of the tragedy, experts and crowd safety say an investigation by neutral outsiders could help the city avoid potential conflicts of interest and promote transparency. There are going to be arguments as to who exactly is responsible for this tragedy, how it could have possibly occurred. One thing is for certain, Travis Scott and anyone who had a role in putting on that festival is going to get sued. And they've been sued. Manuel Souza Plaintiffs versus Scoremore LLC, Scoremore Management LLC, Scoremore Holdings LLC, Sasha Stone Gutfreund, Live Nation Worldwide Inc., Live Nation Entertainment Inc., Live Nation Marketing Inc., Daryl Platt, ASM Global Parent Inc., ASM Global LLC, Mark Miller, Keith Butler, Trey Hicks, Jacques Webster II, aka Travis Scott, Cactus Jack Records LLC, Defendants. Plaintiff's original petition, jury demand, and Rule 193.7 notice and application for temporary restraining order and temporary injunction. My main takeaway from all of that, other than the fact that the plaintiff is suing pretty much everyone and anyone who had a hand in putting on that show, Travis Scott's real name is Jacques Webster II. Second. As far as the rest of the lawsuit goes, it's pretty standard. As far as these lawsuits go, you have the description of the parties, the plaintiff, the various defendants. One thing that's very interesting in this lawsuit is the past behavior of Travis Scott himself. Defendant Jacques Berman Webster II, aka Travis Scott, is an individual who resides in Harris County, Texas. Factual background. On November 5, 2021, a horrible yet predictable and preventable tragedy struck the Astroworld Festival at NRG Park in Houston. Defendants are the owners, operators, promoters, public relations, representatives and or organizers of the concert and or owners and operators of the premises. Defendants individually and collectively further made representations to concert goers that quote safety and security are always our top priority end quote and that they would quote ensure a safe secure and positive environment is provided for all attendees artists and staff end quote. Tragically due to defendants motivation for profit at the expense of concert goers health and safety and due to their encouragement of violence at least eight people lost their lives and scores of others were injured and what was supposed to be a night of fun. Then we get into the factual elements of what actually occurred that evening, but we don't get into any meaningful detail, except the factual elements of what occurred that evening seem to be exacerbated by Travis Scott's past conduct. Plaintiff's injuries were the inevitable and predictable result of defendants' conscious disregard of the extreme risks of harm to concert goers that had been escalating since hours earlier. Earlier in the day, concert goers breached a security gate around the park, stampeded into the premises, and trampled over one another. Yet defendants made the conscious decision to let the show go on despite the extreme risks of harm to concert goers. Later, several times during the ongoing show performed by defendant Jacques Webster, aka Travis Scott, on the evening of November 5, emergency vehicles literally drove through the massive crowd to render aid to concert goers who had suffered serious, obvious injury. This was against the backdrop of multiple reports of tramplings, patrons losing consciousness, patrons being unable to breathe due to the profound lack of crowd control, inadequate water, inadequate security, and a lack of exit routes. So many people were hurt, and so few emergency personnel were provided by defendants that patrons themselves had to conduct CPR on their fellow concert goers. Yet defendants made the conscious decision to let the show go on despite the extreme risk of harm to concert goers that was escalating by the moment. Eventually, due to the defendants' active decision to let the show go on, the scene devolved into a complete melee resulting in the needless, untimely death of at least eight people and injuries to scores of others. There are tons of video of the incident floating around social media. There's even one video of Travis Scott seemingly singing. 
hanging as someone is being hand lifted out of the crowd, seemingly unconscious. And it's very difficult to understand what is going on, what is the context, what Travis Scott could see from the stage. And all of these allegations in this lawsuit are just allegations, but the way it's adding up, it really does not look very good. And it really looks like Travis Scott knew or very well ought to have known what was going on in the crowd while he continued to perform. And as if that might not have been enough on its own, it seems that Travis Scott has a history of creating very, very dangerous situations at his concerts. This tragedy was months, if not years, in the making. On May 5, 2021, in response to fan complaints about the concert quickly selling out, defendant Jacques Webster, aka Travis Scott, tweeted, quote, we still sneaking the wild ones in, exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation, uh, you know where I'm going with this, end quote. This recklessly encouraged fans to breach the barriers and otherwise actively encouraged a culture of violence. It's not alleged in the lawsuit, so it's not clear that the attorneys for the plaintiff know of the existence of this video, but I have personally seen video on the internet of Travis Scott seemingly encouraging fans to jump off the balcony at certain concerts and land on the crowd below them because they will catch them with their hands, and people actually do this. Although the one video I saw did not seem to end in an injury, apparently it was either at the same concert or at another concert. Travis Scott encouraged someone to jump off the balcony. They fell off the balcony and broke their leg, but that is just what I read on the internet. This kind of behavior has long been encouraged by the festival's founder and main performer, defendant Jacques Webster, aka Travis Scott. Reading this lawsuit, it really seems that plaintiff wants to continually remind everyone out there that Travis Scott's real name is Jacques Berman Webster II. But moving on to the substance of the allegation. Scott actively encourages his fans to, quote, rage, end quote, at his concerts. His express encouragement of violence has previously resulted in serious violence at numerous past concerts. In 2015, he was arrested for disorderly conduct in Chicago for inciting violence at a concert by encouraging fans to breach barricades. In 2017, he was arrested and for inciting a riot in Arkansas at a concert. In 2017, a fan was paralyzed at a Scott concert in New York City after a raucous crowd incited by Scott pushed the fan off a balcony. All of this was known to defendants at all relevant times and in no event prior to the time the first patron entered NRG Park on November 5, 2021. Defendants failed to properly plan and conduct the concert in a safe manner. Instead, they consciously ignored the extreme risks of harm to concert goers and and in some cases actively encouraged and fomented dangerous behaviors. Their gross negligence caused plaintiff serious injuries. Plaintiff has therefore been damaged far in excess of the jurisdictional limits of this court. The lawsuit then provides a relatively exhaustive list of the alleged negligence and carelessness of the defendants. I'll just flash it right now so you can pause it and read through it at your leisure. The lawsuit then includes a notice to preserve evidence which enjoins the defendants from destroying or modifying any material evidence to this lawsuit and the plaintiff goes so far as to actually ask for the preservation to be ordered by way of an injunction. Application for temporary restraining order and injunctive relief. Based on reasonable information and belief, plaintiffs assert that the defendants may change, alter, destroy, or modify the evidence related to this tragedy. Pursuant to Texas Rule of Civil Procedure 680, plaintiffs ask this court to issue a temporary restraining order prohibiting defendants from altering moving, modifying, reconfiguring, replacing, destroying, or disposing of the subject premises and its fixtures and improvements as they existed on November 5, 2021, including but not limited to the stage infrastructure, barricades, vehicles, permits, documents, electronically stored information, surveillance footage, and all equipment and appurtenances near and or involved with the incident in question until plaintiffs are given an opportunity to inspect such evidence. I suspect, but I'm not certain that they are in fact going to preserve the premises in any event because I suspect they are also under 
particular criminal investigation and that this is in fact the scene of a potential crime. I'm not 100% certain I will be discussing this with Robert Barnes during our next live stream. But with that said, if you like my videos, you like my content, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell and drop a comment in the comment section below because it feeds the algorithm. I'm too old for this. If you want to support the channel, all of the support links are in the pinned comment. You can follow and support Robert Barnes and I on Locals at BeavaBarnesLaw.Locals.com All of my content is also on Rumble, so you can catch it there. But more important than anything, take care of yourselves, check in on friends and family, make sure everyone around you is doing well. And now you know your vlog. Peace out. Bye -bye.